with China. Ward Elcock is a former director of Canadian Security Intelligence. He's with us now. Um, Ward, just in terms of where this stands here, um, it, I just confused King Solomon and Pontius Pilate, so I'm off to a bad start with my wise <laughs> men. But uh, why, why wouldn't we wash our hands of this? If, if there is a legal argument, if the judge says, yes, I, I get the cri double criminality, why would we appeal that rather than say, great, send us back our innocent Canadians? Uh, I think I think we have to let the whole case play out before we all of the elements of it before we decide we, we need a final decision that that uh, uh, from the judge to say that that she shouldn't be extradited before we can wash our hands of it and even then um, that it's not even clear that that will solve our problem with the Chinese at the end of the day um, but I think uh, given, given the rule of law and our, will, and our determination to let the rule of law play out, mm -hmm. it's important for us to do that all the way. And the reality is there is another important interest at stake in all of this, and that's our relationship with the United States. For sure. And obviously, rule of law is something we take um, as seriously as any of the actors here, if not more so. But just in terms of how this is playing out, we did talk about the, uh, the length of time of this process. The, the timeliness of, uh, of court proceedings in this country has been under massive focus, right? We've got a shortage of judge. We have criminals being set free mm -hmm. or cases dismissed because of a ruling that says there is a limit on how long things can take. Does it strike you as just that somebody who is extradited, um, who may be completely innocent of the crimes uh, levied against them, it could be in this kind of weird purgatory for years in the end? Uh, I think at the end of the day, the reason why it's taking longer is that, that, that the, the Huawei CFO has the resources to make it take longer. Uh, lots of lots of extradition cases go much more quickly. Uh, she has she has the lawyers and and the wherewithal, therefore, uh, to to make this to play this out uh, through all of its ramifications. Uh, this isn't a function of uh, not to not enough judges and so on and so forth. This is uh, not unusual in 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 extradition cases where people have the resources and she has them. Is it possible, Ward, to separate? What's happening here uh, from Canada's decision on Huawei as a provider of 5G equipment? In other words, when we talk about kind of the, the political diplomatic ramifications here, are they all bound together in our relationship with China today? Uh, well, they are ultimately all bound together. I suspect for the government, uh, the government could make a decision separately from the Meng case, but, but I suspect that they're loath to do so. Uh, in the face of, of the main case, because it could make the situation of the two individuals in China, or they, however many individuals the Chinese are actually holding as a result of this, um, uh, it could make their situation worse rather than better. So just in terms of what the, what the, the kind of the best proceeding for the government is, we just heard from, uh, from Ben that it's really stick to the rule of law. We've been doing that so far. Is there anything that we could have done differently? Because part of the argument that her lawyers will make is that in the process of, uh, of kind of ex executing this uh, extradition warrant, we actually abused her rights. Is, are there some grounds there that the, the process actually hasn't been followed? Uh, it will be interesting to see if they can prove that in the subsequent hearing that your reporter, the CTV reporter, was talking about. But I suspect that's going to be pretty hard to demonstrate. Uh, I haven't really heard anything so far, and obviously I'm not a, fully aware of all the details, uh, but I haven't heard anything so far that's particularly convincing on that frame. Uh, and I suspect they're going to have a hard time proving that. In your experience, where does this stand in terms of kind of the uniqueness of these circumstances? Uh, it's not the, it's not, it, this is a particularly difficult case because of the nature of the relationship between us and China and us and the United States and us being caught in the middle. Uh, I've never really seen an extradition case that has dropped us in quite such a difficult position. We've had difficult extradition cases in the past, but not like this. Uh, it's, it's really hard to compare it with anything else. This is a very difficult one and a very difficult one for the government uh, with our two major trading partners. And is this one where there's any room for um, a higher level intervention? I, in, I, and I don't mean um, for or against, or I just mean something that this could be elevated to the cabinet level and taken out of the process, or would that just fly in the face of, a, of everything we've said so far about how Canada will stand behind the process? Well, at some point, at some point, the minister will also have to make a decision depending on 
uh, which way the, the, the judge's finding ultimately goes, uh, and that, that will be a difficult decision to make. Uh, but I suspect that uh, unless there is, is uh, some, something dramatically wrong with the court case, uh, in, the, in the minister's view, it will be very hard for him to, uh, uh, to take a political decision to, let, to send Mrs. Meng back to, uh, back to China, and, and that he will therefore have to, he will more than likely have to sustain the decision to extradite Mrs. Meng if that's the way the court goes. And of course, you know, that, that what that means is not that her, this case is settled at all, right? It just means she will go to the U.S. and there go through another long process that, that she will no doubt fight at every turn. Uh, if she's successful here, it is back to China, but an extradition request remains outstanding for her. Is that how that works? Uh, if, if, if she goes back to China, uh, because we refused, ultimately the court says that she shouldn't be extradited for whatever reason, then she'll have to be very careful with her travel. Uh, the rea I, I still do not understand why she would ever have been rooted through Canada in the first place, uh, because that would clearly have been a risk, and apparently uh, Huawei knew about the, uh, uh, the, the, the investigation mm. in the United States. So, so traveling through Canada was always a risky thing to do. Ward, great to have your thoughts on this. Appreciate it. Oh, I'm glad to be have a help. Ward Elcock is the former director of Canadian Security Intelligence Service.